This service is for May 23rd, 2021. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you brought us together to know you better and deeper wherever we are. Let us be saturated by the Holy Spirit now so that we can clearly see you in your word. May your word truly free us and empower us to live out your word, particularly on what we listen today. We love you with our heart, mind, soul, and all of our strengths. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
This passage is from James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. Owen Park is going to read it for us. Let's say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant scandals. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Teacher Hannah Yujang Park, Yujang Choi is going to pray for us. Hanan님,지난한주도무사히지켜주시고,이자리까지인도해주셔서감사합니다.우리가보이지않는주님의은혜에늘감사하며살아갈수있도록인도해주세요.이시간,장난치거나다른생각하지않고,정성을다해예배
you know, like the uh, alarm and the people went outside, I was thinking about myself and about people. You know, when we live on earth, we feel like we think that we are going to live here forever. Like uh, we tend, to, tend not to think about our uh, last day because we think we live forever. But for me, it's like that situation reminded me the last day. We don't know when we leave the earth and then when we go to heaven. We don't know when, what day. We don't know the time either. So just me bring this key and my cell phone. We are not prepared to bring even wallet. So today's passage talks about our plan and what's going on, those kind of things. So I wanted to begin with this story. Uh, there's two things that I want to mention today and the one, point one. So I want to say, plan as if you were to live in heaven. What do you mean? So when you plan things, you plan things as if you were in heaven. In heaven. Um, I have a really, like, there's like a, some quirk that I like, but then one of them is like this. Live as, as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Like Gandhi said that. Um, it's like a leave, it's just like there's no tomorrow, like a, you live really hard. And then learn, if you're going to live forever, that means you learn hard too. But I said, point one, plan as if you were to live in heaven, in the heaven. So it's like when you plan on earth, just think about here as like a temporary things, but think about the heaven is like a forever eternal right so when we plan here because we are going there just fix your eyes our eyes on the heaven and think about the priorities what's going to happen in there right so if we plan when we plan as if you were to live in the heaven then we can think about the important thing is what is the most important thing then, right? So when we think like that, our point of view, our thoughts will be changed. Not focusing on things on earth, but then focusing on things in the heaven. Verse 13, it says, Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, will go to this or that city. Spend the year there, carry on business and make money. So carrying on business, making money, it is something that we must do for a living, right? But then it says, verse 13, let me read it again. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow will go this city or that city, spend the year there and carry on business and make money. Verse 13, What about 14? Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Hmm. Carrying on business, making money, these are something that we do for a living. But then Verse 14, reading it together, what does that mean? Does that mean because you don't know your future, do not make any plan? Does that mean like that? No, let me tell you the point. So, uh, think about this. For example, plan. What do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to be when you get older? What kind of major you want to have? What university you want to go? Um, in Canada, in Korea, in US, or maybe in Australia? So the plans, you have to make plans. The Bible today is not saying do not make any plans. So that means you have to make plans even though you don't know tomorrow. But thing is, you have to think about one thing important. I'll tell you. 
First 14, it talks about you are like the mist, vanishes quickly. The mist, what is the mist? Mist is like uh, ange, right? Isn't that different from fog? So like, uh, you know, like um, people use this all the time. People say mist. See? Maybe you cannot see it well, but I see it, but then it's gone already. So mist is like this. It's there, but then disappears quickly. Sometimes you don't even see it. You feel it, and then I felt it, and then I don't feel it anymore. So your life is like that. You're here temporarily on earth, but then you'll be disappeared like a mist. Like mist, and does not last long. And you don't know about like tomorrow. Okay, let me tell you my Thursday. Thursday, this Thursday, let me this past Thursday. Okay, let me show you a picture. So in the picture, you see the left side, my iPad, and the right side, the gray kind of booklet thing. That is an international driver's license. I wanted to make international driver's license. I mean, renew that. Um, so Wednesday night, I planned for Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, I was a little bit sick. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe tomorrow um, I need to rest and I need to see my doctor. And also after that, um, if, if it's possible, and also then I'm going to have an international license. And um, actually, like I wanted to talk with my doctor, but then I didn't know until Wednesday uh, what my plan will be on Thursday look like. Because Thursday, I'm supposed to go to school and teach. But then like Wednesday, I was sick suddenly. When you're sick, your world stops and you cannot do anything. So I had to take a day off and then call the doctor, right? So when I called the doctor, the doctor, I mean the nurse said, you need to come and see the doctor. So I went to um, uh, see my family doctor on Thursday. So my picture, you saw the you no know, um, international driver's license. That, that was my plan, but I couldn't purse my plan because I had to go to see the doctor. Later on, I was able to, but then like I, what I want to say is that you sometimes plan for this, but then you have to change your plan totally. So let me go back to the first point. So the Bible says, you don't know about tomorrow, you're like mist. You're like mist. You're here, but vanishes quickly. It does not mean that you don't plan. You make plans, but remember God in your plans. Ask God about your plans when you make your plans. Verse 14, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are missed that appears for a while, for a little while, and then vanishes. So we have to include God in our plans, in our making plans, because God knows about tomorrow. God knows about our future. And He is the one who can bring us there, eternal life in heaven. So we live on earth here, but when we make plans, we have to have God in our plans. And we plan as if we were to we'll live in the heaven. Point two, live according to God's will. Let me read the verse 16 for you, for you. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. So there are two terms, boast and brag. So what is boast? What is a boast? We're boasting. So boast is talk with too much pride, too much pride and self-satisfaction about one's achievement. So you did something well and you are like too proud or you are like too much self-satisfied about what you have or what you can do, or what you have done. It's boasting. And I said, 
self satisfaction. So what is the issue? What's the matter with self satisfaction? It's like a self satisfaction. There's no God. You're at the center. That's why. And brag. Brag is like a say something in a boastful manner. You did something really nice, but then you're really proud of yourself and self -set, too much self-satisfied. And then when you say things, you like uh, talk about things like in that manner. You're at the center. God is somewhere else. So that's bragging. Brag and boast. So those, the Bible says, Sins. Self satisfaction. Again, you're at the center. God is not. The issue is you don't know the future. You don't know tomorrow, but then God does. Right? So that's the issue. So boasting and bragging, boast and brag, God doesn't like them. Because when you are centered, that means you don't know. You don't remember God's grace. Everything is God's grace, but then you forget because you're there. Okay, it's like how oh, your parents cook for you and gives you meals like uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and does the bedding, and then you can sleep and you can go to school. Your parents drive you or walk with you to school. They do everything. They sometimes buy like a good gift, like a Christmas gift and like a children's day gift and your birthday gift. But then you don't remember your parents. You act like there is no parents. Then your parents will be sad. Maybe you can think about that situation. Imagine, imagine there's only one chair in your heart. So your heart, your mind, there's only one chair in the middle of the, the mind. There's only one chair. Only one person can sit on it. Is it you or Jesus? If you sit there, Jesus will be standing. He cannot be sitting there. But if Jesus sits there, then you can be standing beside of him and let him sit, like sit there, right? And then the verse says, talks about evil. Evil, what is it? When we talk about evil in the Bible, that means evil is like a understood to be an opposition to God. Anything that against God, anything not following God, like against him, opposition, that's evil. So boasting, like a boast, brag, these are sin and evil. That's what the Bible says. So you need to have God in your plans. Okay, God plans everything. You know, like um, um, Jesus, like he, Jesus prayed a lot, but then like one of the famous prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, was, Jesus knew that he's going to be not dead and die on the cross. And Jesus prayed so hard, you know, like, Father, if it is possible, just let me just pass. Let me not carry the cross. Let me not die on the cross. Jesus prayed so hard. And his sweat became like blood because he prayed so hard. But even that, you know, like, Jesus, like, the human form, like, Fully God, also fully human, like a pain. He feels it, right? So he didn't, like as a human, he, no one likes to be die. I mean, to be dead and die on the cross. That's why Jesus prayed so hard. But at the end of the prayer, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, if it is your will, right? Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus said honestly what he wants, but then he said at the end, not my will, but your will be done. <laughs> Our Father sent Jesus for us, and Jesus was died, right? Was dead. He died on the cross. God loves us this much. 
His beloved son is here. So when we ask God about the plans, my plans, do you think God will give us something bad? No, of course not. As I said, God knows his only son will die on the cross, but then God sent his son for us. So when we plan and we ask God, God, help me, what should I do? And pray hard and you plan and include God and let him plan for your plan, then God will lead the perfect way. So focus on God and Jesus. Because his plans are perfect. Okay. God in my plans. God in your plans. God in our plans. He has to be there. We know that in our head. That Jesus has to be at the center of our heart. But human nature, like, you know, like human nature, like human beings, we plan things and we are really busy, right? And you know, like uh, things around you, including cell phone, makes you busy and busy and busy and like do this and do that, like playing game or like doing something else, you know, doing homework and then, you know, like uh, watching internet, like YouTube, TikTok, whatever, making you busy. The world makes you busy. Um, one of the professors at Regent College, his name is Eugene Peterson. Eugene Peterson. Um, I took one of his classes and then um, I really um, loved what he said. Uh, and I want to show you one picture and this is um, from one book, like the court that I also like. So picture please. Okay, so when you read it, what does it say? Business. It's not a typo. Busy, B-U-S-Y. Busyness is an illness of the spirit. That means being busy, being busy is an illness of the spirit. They say, oh, I'm really busy now. I have to prepare for the exam, upcoming exam. I need to do that. I need to do this. And you're saying, you're saying to yourself, after this, it will be okay. After this, I'll have more time. But trust me, no. The world makes you and keeps you being busy. We are God's creation. We need to follow God's manual. That's what that means. When we work, we follow God's manual. And when we rest, we follow God's manual. Sabbath. Right? Whatever we do, God must be centered. In the Bible says, you need to have the Sabbath, and then you need to have the Sabbath. The Bible says, today's verse, you plan, but you are not including God. That's not good. That means you include God when you plan. So we follow the Bible. And God must be our everything. Right? When we do that, your life will be full of happiness, full of gratitude, like being thankful. And you're blessing that you receive from God will be really a lot and then you can give these blessings to ones around you okay may God bless you abundantly close your eyes now I want you to close your eyes close them so I want to ask you this what do you want to be In 10 years, in 20 years, what are your plans? What are your plans? Think about the plans in details. Is there God in your plans? If we want to have this major, or if we want to be this person, or if you have that job, what's the reason? That's the way that you can know if there's God in your plans or not. 
how your family members live, live, or their lives will be changed if your plans follow God's will. So when you make plans. Let's say you're following God's will. You ask God all the time, and then you make perfect plan, and then you follow it. When you do that, does that change your life? Yes, for sure. Does that change your family's lives, family members' lives? Yes, right. And how? What will like a what they will be look like? And how can you have God in your plans? How? I want to say solution would be to fear and love God more and more. When you fear God, when you love God more and more, you remember God in everything, in your everything, in in your plans as well. You can pray now. You can ask God. Make you love God more, actually the most. Dear Jesus, we would learn that we need to remember you in our plans. Let us have you in our plans. Be our everything. We want to have you in our learning, eating, sleeping, crying, breathing, winning, losing, and everything else. Let us include you in our life. Make us give you our chair, which is at the center of our heart. Your plans for us are perfect. We know you love us more than anything. You alone will be glorified through our lives. We love you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Let's the Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>